Hello friends, this video on introduction to Euclid's geometry part 2 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Okay, so let's understand what is Euclid geometry. See, Euclid geometry is a mathematical system which is attributed to Euclid. This is Euclid here. And it is nothing but study of planes and solid figure, let me write here. Okay. So it is the study of planes and solid figures. Solid figures like cone, cuboid, cube, study of planes, all these will have planes. Okay, and this study is based on axioms and theorems. So what are these axioms and theorems? We'll understand this. These axioms and theorems was all compiled by So Euclid compiled all these axioms and theorems. Okay. And please note why do we say Euclid geometry now? Why we just said uh, we, don't, we just don't say geometry? Because see, see, actually until 19th century, till 19th century, geometry was Euclid geometry because there was only one version of geometry called Euclid geometry. So geometry used to imply Euclidean geometry. But during 19th century, a non-Euclidean geometry also evolved. So we'll talk about that later. Don't be confused. Okay. Okay. As I told, Euclid geometry is nothing but a geometry of planes and solid figures that is based on axioms and theorems compiled by Euclid. So prior to this, they were mathematicians, Thales, Pythagoras, Aristotle, Democritus. These people have actually gave given a lot of good theorems, but these theorems were passed on to the next generation by word of mouth, word of mouth, or through leaves. So Euclid compiled everything in a book called Elements. That is a very good thing he did. Okay. And that's why this geometry is called Euclid geometry. And the book name is called The Elements. Okay, if you see the book name is called The Elements. This is the name of the book by Euclid. And if you see this book has 13 chapters okay and each of the chapter is called book please note this is chapter 1 chapter 2 chapter 3 chapter 4 chapter 5 till chapter 13 but each of these chapter is called book why book because euclid gave that name that way okay this is one book which has 13 chapter and each chapter is called a book okay the book name is called the elements this is the major thing did, uh, done by euclid Please note, this is the second most popular book after Bible printed. The Elements is the second most popular book in the world after Bible. Very, very popular book. Lot of good scientists like Kepler, Galileo, Copernicus, Isaac Newton, they were influenced by this book. Okay. As I told you, the book one, that is the chapter one, has data on straight lines. The chapter 2 talks about geometric al algebra. Chapter 3 talks about circles. Chapter 4 talks about again circle inscriptions and circumscriptions. Chapter 5 talks about theory of proportions. Chapter 6 talks about theory of proportions as applied to plane geometry. Chapter 7 talks about number theory. Chapter 8 talks about theory of proportions as applied to number theory. Chapter 9 talks about further number theory that includes the prime number, geometric series, perfect numbers. Chapter 10 talks about irrational numbers, the step toward calculus. Chapter 11 talks about spatial geometry. Chapter 12 talks about cone, pyramids, and cylinders. And chapter 13 talks about the platonic solid. You see here, so it talks about solids, it talks about algebra, it talks about circles, two dimensional, it talks about three dimensional geometry, right? it talks about numbers numbers so it talks about a lot of things okay so he compiled a book and he, this book actually has 13 chapters and in these chapter he has assumed in, or in this book he has assumed that there are some axioms so we'll talk about axioms he has some, assumed some axioms and he has assumed these to be true okay he has assumed this to be And then he has deduced theorems based on this. 
So he has assumed axioms to be true. He's assumed to be true, and then based on that, he has deduced some theorems, and using theorems, he can prove a lot of stuff. Okay. So please note that all these axioms and theorems which he has mentioned in this, it is not his creation. Everything is not his creation. Okay. Because most of these, in fact, a good amount of these were stated by earlier mathematicians like Thales, Pythagoras. We have seen that these mathematicians came before Euclid. It has been stated by earlier mathematicians, but Euclid was the first to show how these propositions could fit into a comprehensive deductive and logical system. It was Euclid who could actually relate the numbers theory with the circles and 3D. So he compiled a book and he, he made a very good book. He used the existing data and he compiled in a very nice way and uh, so that people can deduce things, right? He, he can, people can actually logically think and come to a conclusion. Okay. And if you see this element, it begins with a plane geometry. It talks about plane geometry first. Geometric algebra, straight lines, circles, all these are plane geometry. Okay. And then it goes into a solid 3D geometry. And if you see in this, the algebra is explained using geometrical language. For example, when I say a plus b square is equal to a square plus b square plus 2ab, very famous expression. I can explain this using geometry. So this is, let's suppose, square in dimension A. There's another square with dimension B. So, or let's take this way. Let this be a big square. This length is also A plus B. This length is also A plus B. Okay, this length is A, this length is B, this length is B, this length is A, this is B, this is B, this is A, this is B. Okay, let's take this, this big square. So this is A, this is B, this is A plus 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 B. So the whole value of this area is what? A plus B square. Okay, if this is A plus B, this is A plus B, this is a square. So the area will be a plus b square. You can also rewrite the whole square into this form. This is a, this is a, this is what? a square. This is b, this is b, this is what? b square. This is a rectangle of side a and b. So this is what? ab. This is also a rectangle of side ab, a and b. Also. So if you see that, using geometry, you can prove that a plus b square is equal to a square plus b square plus a b. So these all thoughts, these all approach was given by Euclid. If you see here, the algebra, algebraic expression is proved using geometry. Okay, so uh, the, the algebra was explained using geometrical language. That was the power of this book. If you see, they are talking about uh, numbers, we are talking about the number theory, so it talks about number theory, it talks about geometry, both in 2D and 3D, and it also relates the algebra with the geometry. Okay. And this was, this book, The Elements by Euclid was written by Euclid, and it was written in 300 BC. In 300 BC, Euclid wrote this book. Okay. And it's a collection of definitions, postulates, theorems, and proofs. We'll talk about these terms, just understand that the whole book is based on axioms and theorems, axioms, postulates and theorems. Let me introduce the new term also, postulates and theorem. In fact, both these axioms and postulates are linked, they are similar but not same. Okay, And it is actually, this book is actually proved, it has been proven to be instrumental in the development of logic and modern science. So many scientists believe that this book this book actually has made people to think, to think the logic and this has helped to develop the modern science. Okay. 
as I told, this is the most successful and the most influential textbook ever written. And as I already told, scientists like Galileo, Kepler, Copernicus, Isaac Newton, they were highly influenced by this book. And they've applied the knowledge of this book in their respective disciplines. Okay. And if you see this, I'm talking so much about this book element. And the success of this book is primarily because of the logical reasoning or the logical presentation of most of the mathematical knowledge available at that time. Right? So it was more of a logical reasoning uh, kind of thing that has been provided. This book helped people to think logically, to think deductively. Okay? So it was, let me repeat once again, the success of this book element was mainly because of its logical representation or presentation of the most of the mathematical knowledge available at that time. And the first version was written obviously in Greek because it's Greek civilization. It was written in Greek in 3000 BC and then uh, it was rewritten in English and other languages also. Okay, so that is this book and if you see it has 13 chapters and the first chapter is on the straight lines and geometry. When you say straight lines in geometry, it talks about Pythagoras theorem, construction of different type of triangles, perpendicular lines, angles, all these, which uh, most of these we'll learn in the next chapter. So this book talks about that. The first chapter talks about that. But the whole book is all about geometry, two-dimensional geometry, three-dimensional geometry, and also how to link geometry with algebra. Okay, as I told, the new terms, axiom, theorems and postulates, we'll discuss about that. Thank you. Visit our website examfear.com to watch more and more quality education videos. You can also attempt free online tests that are there in our website. You can also get access to tons of free study materials and you can also find free tutors and mentors in this website. Thanks a lot.